We've got the first and second most important men in the world meeting today. Who's who? Well, Xi Jinping and, and Donald Trump have had very icy start since the election of Donald Trump. And as we remember, there were lots of anti-China rhetoric, particularly even before the election and on the campaign trail. Now we see a much warmer relationship. Um, not only Donald Trump is the first American president to be invited and welcomed within Forbidden City. This is very much the first time any Chinese, Chinese leader had offered that honor to a foreign leader. And when we talk about trade, Amer putting American first, what Donald Trump did almost as an amazing diplomatic triumph is a few days before he arrived to China, FAA approved the airworthiness of Chinese aircraft manufacturers. Um, so now the China, Chinese aircrafts and parts will be able to be sold within the U.S. as well as to other countries around the world. That is something extremely significant on the trade side. That's something China has wanted for a long time. It's a milestone. Right, to okay. have that approved. Well, we can bring in now Richard McGregor. He's former Washington bureau chief for the Financial Times and author of a new book, Asia's Reckoning, China, Japan and the Fate of U.S. Power in the Pacific. So, Richard, Diane just talking us through some of the trade deals that have been struck today. They aren't going to make any meaningful difference to the trade imbalances between America and China, though, are they? No, no, they're not. Um, I mean, this is Mr. Trump is obsessed with the bilateral trade balance, and that's never really going to come down because the Chinese bilateral trade balance with America is really uh, part of a, a, a regional imbalance with the U.S. So just concentrating on the bilateral imbalance um, won't make much difference. So I don't think there's any really great progress on the trade issue at all today. I mean, Donald Trump's made some pretty blood-curdling threats to China in the past, threatening retaliation against China if they don't mend their ways in terms of trade practices. Do you think he's going to rein back on those, or is that threat still live, Richard? I think that threat is still live. We don't know what's going to happen, but the US has a number of cases that is filed with the World Trade Organi Organization which would, al would allow them to retaliate. I think, you know, this is going to play out over a, a lengthy number of years. The U.S. really has not got all its ducks in a row yet on the trade issue to allow it to push back against China. What we're seeing now is symbolic action to placate Mr. Trump, but I think it's got a long way to go yet. Diane, do you think that Donald Trump may soften some of his trade demands if Mr. Xi agrees to help him out in terms of reigning in North Korea? Donald Trump has already changed his tones from the time that he went into the White House and the relationship is much warmer now and if we look at a political relationship we'll see that to spill over to trade. I'm sure trade will be a big topic in China however there is North Korea issue. And there's also the political bilateral relationship between the two so the first and second largest economy in the world. Um, we've heard a lot less of anti-China rhetoric from the camp, uh, the Donald Trump camp. And I believe that trade will be a, a topic, but the tone will be much more cooperative. All right, Richard. Um, previous presidential visits to China have invariably involved visits to human rights leaders. Mr Trump isn't doing that. No, he's not. I think there's a couple of things to say on that. I don't think he's particularly interested in the issue. It's not high on his personal agenda. And I think over time, of course, the U.S. has taken... Human rights has been less front and center of the relationship, largely in many respects, because the U.S. has little leverage on the issue. They didn't have much leverage when they were a much more powerful country than China. They probably have even less le leverage now. And I think exp that explains the absence of that on this trip so far. All right, Richard McGregor in Washington, Diane Wei-Lang here in London. Thanks both for joining me.